It was early morning. The streets were empty. Duvid took his little brother by the hand and said, Come on, Sherlock. Let's cross to the Polish side. How? Like the smugglers. I've seen them. They crawl through a hole in the wall in back of the house, in the back of the house across the street. Sherlock was excited. He and his brother, who wasn't much older than him, didn't always agree. But this idea he liked. What's on the Polish side? Food and freedom. Sherlock knew what food was. What's freedom, he asked. That's where there's no wall and you can walk as far as you want. And no one stops you. They would said. Some of my friends have left the ghetto through the gate. They wait for a German soldier who looks nice and run to the Polish side. Did you ever do that? Sherlock asked. No. Going through the wall is better. But how do you get food to on the Polish side? You beg for money and buy food with it at the grocery. Page 2. The groceries have everything, like panty, stinkins, and bologna, and bologna before the war. Candy, too? Candy, too. Sherlock was a redhead with freckles, blue eyes, and a winning and a winning smile. Even after hard times began in the early days of the German occupation, occupation of Poland in World War II, he had secretly used that smile to hoax change from change from his father to buy candy at Panny Stackings, which is a grocery store. But now his father had no more change. All right, he said, let's go. There's just one thing, his brother said. We have to watch out for the tough Polish kids. What will they do to us? Beat us up? Bad. Pretty bad. Do you still want to come? Yes, Sherlock said without hesitating. They ducked through the hole in the wall, two grinning. Polish boys were waiting on the other side of it. We'd better go back, David said. Sherlock wished they didn't have to, not just because of the candy. He missed the other thing even more. The being able to walk all you wanted, the way you could, when they had to, they had their own house in the town of Bologna. Duvin and Sherlock's parents heard of the route through the wall and decided to escape from the ghetto and return to Bologna. Maybe some Polish friends there would agree to hide them. A year and a half had gone by since they were, since they were forced to leave the village. It had been a grime time. Page three. Anything would be better than slow death from starvation in the ghetto in Warsaw. It was decided that Sherlock, with his father and mother, would go first. If they made it, David would follow with his older brother and sister. They would know their parents were in Bologna because they would get a postcard that said, We haven't heard for you, from you for ages. Drop us a line. Yak. Yak, Sherlock's father, was a Polish name. What? Father, father, father was a Polish name. Sherlock remembered the town well. They had lived there together. His parents, his uncle, his grandfather, and his four brothers and sisters. In a house with one large room. His uncle and his older sister, Biege, had escaped across the border to Russia when the war with Germany broke out. His grandfather was taken into the hospital one day and never came back. Duvid guided his parents and Sherlock to the opening in the wall. They said goodbye to him and crossed through it. The morning sun was already high in the sky. The streets of Warsaw looked normal. If not for an occasional German soldier, you wouldn't have known there was a war. Go slow, Sherlock's father told him. Maybe believe, make believe we're just out for a walk. Don't look at the German soldiers. Don't look at the Polish policemen. Make believe what... We do this every day. Sherlock couldn't resist looking at everything. The display windows of the stores, the well-dressed mothers with the baby carriages, the cars, the electric trolleys, the horse-draw coaches, yes, the soldiers, and the police. Men, too. His father and his mother looked straight ahead. They forced themselves to behave like any two parents. Page 4. Taking a walk with their small son, finally they reached the outskirts of the city. Sherlock was overjoyed. Everything made him smile. The green fields, the flowers growing on by the roadside, the cows, the horses grazing in the grass, the big blue sky that stretched to the horizon, where a thin black line marked the edge of the Camp Kinawaski Forest. It was just like, ju just it was just like before the war. Suddenly, three German soldiers on motorcycles. On motorcycles came speeding toward them. 
Sherlock's father jumped into a ditch by the side of the road. He and his mother dived for the other side. His father got away. The Germans caught him and his mother, put them in the sidecar, and brought them to the guest, guest depot. His mother was given a whipping, and they were returned to the ghetto. Sherlock's mother lay for a long while in bed. His father did not return. It took two weeks for Sherlock's mother to recover enough to go foraging with him again in the ghetto's garbage bins. Removing the lid from a bin, she picked up, picked him up and lo slowly enter entered him into it. Even though he told her, he told her he could do it by himself, he even showed her now how, with the help of a re returning st running start, he could grab he could grab the rim of the bin and vault over. This was easier when it was made of bricks. The metal cans were harder. You don't get as dirty when I help you, this mo his mother answered. Mama was different. Mama, wh what's different does... Mama, what difference does that make? Sherlock asked. Still, he thought maybe she was right. The work demanded concentration. When his arms, page four, didn't reach all the way into the garbage, he used a stick or a broken board. He looked for the peels of tomatoes, carrots, beets, and apples, and sometimes found old, moldy bread. Everything went into a straw basket that he handed to his mother at home. She picked out what she was in, in, edible to cook, and edible, what was edible, and cooked it. Although each family received food rations, these were too small to keep them alive, and in winter the garbage froze and was hard to handle. It was better once he found a pair of torn woolen gloves and his mother mended them for him. Now though, it was a hot June day and Sherlock was already eight years old. The trouble with the summer was that the garbage smelled bad and the flies kept buzzing around his head. You couldn't tell them that they had better off looking in the garbage. It took some something unusually smelly to attract their attention. There were ordinary flies, and then there were green, bo and there were green bottles, which his brother Duvid called dead flies. Today, nothing smelled that bad, and there was no way of keeping the flies off him. The basket was full. Mama, he called, ready to hand it to her. There was no answer. No hand took the basket. He stood up and peered out for the garbage bin. Some boys were playing soccer near the ghetto wall that cut the street in half. Sherlock jumped from the bin and ran along the street looking for his mother. For a second, he thought that a woman sitting hunched on a st stump stoop was her, but it wasn't. He ran back to the garbage bin. Perhaps she had run away from the from a policeman and come back. And come back. Someone was chap page six, standing there, emptying a pail of garbage. It wasn't his mother. She was vanished as though into thin into thin air. Sherlock stood wiggling his fingers just like his mother did when she was worried or desperate. He didn't know the way home. He looked around as though in a fog. Everything was still the same. The houses, the windows on both sides of the street hadn't changed. People continued to walk busy, busy, busily on the sidewalk. Busily on the sidewalks. The soccer game in, in the empty lot now was still going on. Even he, Sherlock, would have looked to someone else like the same boy. Yet inside, he felt as though the bottom had bottom had dropped out of himself. He pulled himself together and ran to join the boys playing by the wall. That's the end of chapter one. If you like more, if you like this book and you'd like to read more, you can either buy it on Amazon or keep listening. Bye.